There are numerous days throughout the year celebrated as New Year's Day in the different regions of different countries. Those regions, especially in India, which follow the solar calendar, the new year falls on Vaishakhi in north and central India. Rongali Bihu in Assam, Puthandu in Tamil Nadu, Vishu in Kerala, Pana Sankranti in Orissa, and Poela Buishak in Bengal. In the month of calendar, for example, Vaishak. Generally, this day falls during 14th or 15th of the month of April. In the same way, Easter is the most beautiful festival in the Christian calendar. Easter is a time of hope, of new life and of new beginnings. So let's welcome the new year. Let's bring all hopes together. Today's invited artist is Heiko Deika, a tabla exponent and music producer. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us and art show with artists from Sourcewire Organization. Namaskar. Um, Namaskar. First of all, very happy Easter and Adam Shubo Nabo Bosho. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody, a happy new year, a happy new start every day, every season. And I think it's very important to share these things together. So thank you for inviting me online to be together. Thanks. And we should the same. What first got you? into music i was inspired as a teenager actually as a kid already as a kid i used to listen to radio we only had radio there was no internet there was very limited television Mm -hmm. so i used to listen at night secretly because my parents of course wanted me to sleep but i was listening to this fm radio Mm -hmm. and i used to tune in to different parts of the world and always this very exotic sounds and particular beautiful acoustic instruments it inspired me always i had no clue what i was listening to but the sound just mesmerized me always and that's the first vivid uh, memory i have of being inspired by different sorts of music or music itself then when i was a teenager i had a lot of friends who were musicians they were doing a lot of heavy music like hardcore and heavy guitars and I was a skateboarder at that time, so I was living a pretty wild life on the streets a lot. You meet a lot of people, we used to go to concerts, and a lot of my friends were musicians and great musicians, and that inspired me. I always felt this magic of creating this sound magic, this unity which happens in music and happens with an audience and with performers. So this magic, I always was inspired when I wanted to be part of it. I I really felt like, wow, this is so special what these people can do. But I never found my music that I really loved deeply as as that I wanted to express. I didn't find my music and I didn't find my instrument. So after my high school, I said, I want to go into the world. I'm not just going to go to university and follow the path of studying, getting married, having kids and doing what is expected of me i said no i'm gonna leave everything behind i want to discover the world so i left hitchhiking on my own and i wanted to go all around the globe but after one year of hitchhiking i ended up in india and i heard classical indian music for the first time and it touched me very very deeply and the whole music really came into my spirit and soul the the starting of alap 
with beautiful long notes, the ornamentation in the melody, which was very fun. I could completely relate to it somehow. I have no idea why, but I could relate to it. The emotional expression, but also this very fine way of intonation, of tuning. And then after the alap, the tabla came in and that was like a whole universe of sound opened up for me. This so many different colors of sound and so much expression and just magic just the sound of the two i had no idea i was listening to like and this two sound i had no idea it was also coming from the tabla i was in a hole and listening to it but it was all magic so this whole palette of sound colors and expression it was not just only rhythm it was very poetic to me and that touched me very deeply and then I, I decided okay I'm gonna buy a tabla and I want to learn this and I went and I was in Delhi that time actually it was a concert of Kishoria Monkar and well that's a very high level beautiful refined spiritual performance and experience and God bless her soul and Rag. I remember the rock she was actually singing was Sampurna Malkans, which is, I think, one of her favorites. And still, I, I listen to that uh, a lot. So that was my initiation and, and what touched me to uh, go and pursue this music and start music. Because I had no musical background. I didn't perform any music. I didn't study any instruments. It really started with tabla. How would you describe the music that you typically create? So the music I create nowadays, it changes always. It's like life itself. I'm always inspired and in my psychological and emotional progress. I hope I make progress there. But everything changes in every phase of life for me so that musical expression is very much related to that the main root is i was trained deeply by my guru ustad fayas Khansa in the traditional way of tabla so classical indian music khayal and particularly the style that he was teaching is is like a very deep style of accompaniment and a beautiful repertoire for solo performances, but especially his way of accompanying instrumentalists or vocalists was on a very high musical level in his sound production and in his musical taste. So that I hope I can still create a little bit of his uh, light and brilliance that he brought into this world. That is always the root of whatever I do. He is in my heart and my spirit and I hope in my hands because he has trained me very strongly and patiently for many years. So the root of anything I do is classical Indian music based on what whatever I've learned from Ustad Fayaz Hansa and whatever I've listened to. I've listened for hundreds, thousands of hours of classical Indian music and a lot of vocal music, a lot of Sitar music, Vilayat Khan Saab, Rais Khan Saab, Nikhil Banerjee, uh, all the great legends. Uh, Amir Khan Saab for vocal was a great, great, great inspiration. Kishore Monker, as I say. So many, so many of the old generation, but also of the younger generation. There's so many great musicians. So that inspires me. Performing with a lot of young artists nowadays. I perform like with Purbayan Chatterjee. I performed with Mita Pandit, the great vocalist, with Sharad Srivastava, the great violinist, with Sabir Sultan Khansab, the Sarangi player. So all these great artists inspire me tremendously. Every moment I spend with them, I carry within me. And that comes out in my musical expression. So bringing it to the now, actually, really we're in this lockdown. And I experienced a lot of inner peace in this lockdown because we can't travel so much. So life is less hectic in a way. I'm spending a lot of time home doing my riyas, my sadhana, but as well composing music. I have a studio up here and I work with some electronic music as well. So nowadays I'm actually tending to doing some like, what's it called? Modular synthesizers 
mixing with tabla and Indian instruments, but on a more meditative level, a spiritual meditative level. Piano, I love this very contemporary style of composing with, with piano, which is also more meditative and more spiritual. I think the world needs this now. Uh, as societies, we need this, but as individual human beings also, I experience it and I hope we can all experience it. I think that through music, we can all relate and connect and tune into this very important values that will help us through the different phases of our lives. What's your favorite or most inspirational place to perform? For me, the main point of inspiration of performing is if there is an audience, it doesn't matter if it's a huge audience or a small audience, if there's one person in a concert that comes to me after the concert and tells me very sincerely that they've been deeply touched by the music, that's kind of my favorite place to be, to perform, because for me that's important. When I go to see music or art or, or meet human beings, I like to be touched myself inside by their presence, by the art, by the music. So mm. when that, that happens, that's for me the most beautiful place to perform. Now on the physical plane, of course India is, is for me always inspirational because it's the homeland of the music that I do. And I feel honored and grateful always to be touring India. I've done tours in Gujarat, I've performed in Calcutta, I've performed in Bombay, in Chennai, in Bangalore, all over India, Delhi, of course, Himalayas. I've been everywhere, Bihar. And everywhere the audience has been very loving and, and supportive. And India has touched me very, very, very deeply because that's where the music comes from and that's where the people really know the music so even on the intellectual level of knowing beyond that also i think in india the audience listens with their hearts so this combination Thank is fantastic you. fantastic and i love it and there's so many great venues to perform mm -hmm. other than that i've performed in china which is magical to to i mean especially as a dutch person playing classical indian music representing classical indian music in china that in itself is for me already very, very special and inspirational and I feel huge, uh, tremendous uh, inspiration to work very hard for those kind of concerts. But then to stand in front of an audience of 10,000 people and they really enjoy the beauty of Tabla, those moments are very special. Then again, to perform in my home country in Holland, there are amazing concert venues and we have wonderful audiences. Again, to be me <laughs> and where I come from. I come from a small village in Holland to perform classical Indian music, which to me is the most beautiful music in the world. And it's a very refined, fine art. To perform that anywhere in the world, but also in my home country, it's always very special. Whenever I perform, I like to share that feeling of inspiration. So basically the whole world. <laughs> What's your process for dealing with live performance anxiety during COVID, especially? Dealing with COVID for me has been very quieting and, and bringing a lot of peace. It's uh, a bit tricky and we have no performances. I really miss the interaction with the audience. Although mm. in the beginning we had, I had a wonderful tour in last September, October, November, where we brought very spiritual music. We were singing mm. uh, mantras and spiritual Western classical music, mm. like uh, devotional and mystical music of both the West and India together with an opera singer and a classical Indian violin. And we performed and it was very special. We had to take care that there was like one and a half meter distance between the people. We had huge halls. We played actually mostly in big cathedrals and churches, which are very inspirational to perform. But there's also a lot of space and you can air it. So it was very safe. So that was very beautiful to, to deal with the corona in, in that 
particular time, still perform, reach people, share an experience, because this is what art does, it brings people together. So dealing with that, I think it's wonderful. Now we are in lockdown again in Holland. Uh, I'm very sad about it, but we have to deal with it. So what I do is, I do my riyaz, I do my practice. I teach all my students online, so via Zoom or WhatsApp or FaceTime or whatever works. I do teach online. I'm very happy that technology allows us to do that nowadays and we're all getting used to it and we have to communicate in different ways, but I think uh, we're all managing. As long as we want to do something, we want to share the music or people want to learn music, people want an experience, we can manage and like this I'm managing and composing a lot of music as I say I have my studio I do some productions I get like orders from London or from India I've done some beautiful projects so I do work online as well mm -hmm. okay. could you please describe a successful journey through your music The short story would be actually a wonderful story is I performed in, I mean, I'm going to tell two stories. I'm sorry. We're musicians. Okay, we're sure, sure. Help. First one is in, in Mexico. I was living in Mexico for a while and I met a pianist, a jazz pianist, and we really got along well. And we decided to do an album together. And this guy was so great, he, he, he just sent me a few compositions or framework of compositions in notation by email. I went through it, uh, just reading the script, the score. I sent him some of my compositions, which are not full composed pieces, they are structures. Like in Indian music you have a bandish and then you can improvise and you come back to the bandish. And like that we had both some compositions and structures. The next day we went to the studio, we spent one day in the studio, recorded a whole album and that album was very beautifully received and a week later we were invited to perform on a huge festival with 10,000 people in the audience in Mexico City, in the middle of the city and it was uh, International Women's Day and I had composed one piece and I had not given it a title so that day we performed live on stage in front of 10,000 people. A lot of beautiful women there because in society in Mexico also there's a lot of women who run things like all over the world. And there I had to name that piece. I was announcing the piece so I called it for her because it was in the moment of International Women's Day and I was really feeling that it was very important to share uh, that women deserve this recognition a lot of being so present in society quietly in the background sometimes or more present but a lot of things in the world are run by women and carried by women i mean i don't have to name it but a lot of weight is carried by women and that's why i called that piece for her and it was received wonderfully so i'll never forget that in my life the second story I wanted to say about special performance is um, the second story I want to tell about the special performance was in 2019 October. This was my last tour to India because afterwards we had lockdown. Mm -hmm. And I was performing with a very close dear friend of mine, a brother, Sharat Chandra Srivastava, who is a wonderful violinist, Khayal. And his grandfather, Pandit Joy Srivastava, and my teacher, Ustad Fayaz Khan, were very close friends. So our relation goes back from before we were born. Our gurus were already very closely connected. And I met him in like 2000, Shagat. And we've been working together, we've been touring in Europe a lot and performing. And then in 2019 October we performed in Bombay in the NCPA for a festival called Strings of the World, Sharat's Festival, in dedication to his grandfather. 
and it was the first time I played in the big hall in NCP, which is one of the most prestigious performance places of India. And we really had a wonderful concert and it was so well received. And I remember my teacher told me, when you perform in Bombay, you really have to perform well because there's a very critical audience, like in Kolkata. But Bombay was very special and I remember that. And I was very grateful that it was received well. We got great reviews. And to be performing on the same stage where all the legends have performed in NCP. So another very special moment in my musical life was going to Switzerland, the country where you are, Shruti Ji. Yes, very yeah. happy to know that you are a wonderful singer and music therapist. You have your beautiful organization, Surzwaren. I think you do wonderful work, and I, th I hope a lot of people come to you and learn and experience music and healing power and inspirational power and beautiful spirit of music in Switzerland through you. And I'm so grateful to have a friend like you for your support. And it's wonderful. Switzerland is a special country because the first time I went there for the music was to follow a workshop by the legendary master uh, Swapan Chaudhary. So I went there and had a few days I could attend his uh, master class and it was such a phenomenal phenomenal experience to be very close to him, very uh, near to him, near to his human personality, near to his hands, to observe how his hands are working, but especially also to see his creative mind. I mean he has all this beautiful knowledge which he shared, but also in the workshop he used to create things and to see that process and to experience it it has inspired a lot to open up creatively and I'm eternally grateful to Swapanji for that inspiration <clears throat> and the end of that masterclass there was a performance I think it was in Ken Sukerman's house or in somebody's house it was a house concert and it was a tabla solo of Panditji and I was lucky enough to really sit like on the first row in on the ground as in a proper Mayfield, but really sit in front of Swapanji and to experience his tabla solo sitting one meter from his tabla in his hands. And I can never forget in my life the, the beauty of, of his performance, of his nikas, his sound production, of the repertoire that he played, the way he made his pistak and going through the development and progress progressions of his repertoire and the joy when he's playing. So all those elements, it, it has inspired me was tremendously and I, I actually hope I can see Pandiji again somewhere in Holland or anywhere in the world because he's a beautiful master and human being. So for now. <clears throat> Then another thing which I think is very important talking about music is the spiritual element. And for me, I've performed a few times for Maharishi Yogi's uh, ashram in Netherlands. He, he used to live in Holland. They had this beautiful old, uh, I think it was a monastery or a castle, I think a monastery. It was huge in the south of Holland and they organize beautiful concerts on Guru Purima, but also on other occasions. And they did a lot of recordings. Uh, the first time I met them was actually in a recording with Pandit Haripsa Charasia. I went to the studio with him because I, I was uh, working as an accompanist in his classes. <clears throat> and I, were, I went there to see him record with my teacher, my guru, Fayas Khansa. And after that, I performed myself there in their organization. And it's such a wonderful experience to perform for the meditative audience. Um, TM really brings a beautiful light to people. Whatever, whenever I met the people who are following TM, they always have this very beautiful light in their eyes and um, are very refined in their mind and spirit. And to perform as a musician, our classical music, we can really relate. We don't have to talk, but the energy is there. You can feel it, the people can feel it. So I'm always happy to perform 
for the TM audience, for Maurice Jogi. I'm very grateful to him for having brought so much knowledge and techniques. I mean, it's also a technique. But apart from all that, there's always a spiritual love and a deeper love, spiritual love behind all this. And I'm very, very grateful for everything that he has brought into this world. Thank you so much and uh, best wishes from us. Thank, Thank you so much you. for being together and for sharing so much music. And let's meet soon in real life again when everything is safe and healthy. And let's stay happy and make music and share music. Jai Gurudev. Jai Gurudev.